Good afternoon, and thank you so much for coming and tuning in to day 12 of 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. Today we're going to be talking about basic strokes with a calligraphy marker. Good afternoon and happy Monday. I have a feeling the connection might not be so great today. Um, we've had kind of intermittent internet issues all weekend. So thanks for coming on in. Hi, Cass. Um, I'll give you guys a minute before I start formally, and I'll chat in the meantime while you guys are getting ready. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about a calligraphy marker. Welcome, Shani. It's good to see you. Um, you finally got your book started. Excellent. Did you washi tape all the edges? Um, I think that's probably one of the one of the fun parts for everybody is getting to put all that color on a plain notebook. Um, it's good to see you guys. So here's here's what we're doing here. We're on day 12 of 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. It's a series that was written back in October 2015. Pardon my um, photo bombers. Um, through the month of March, I'm going to be doing live presentations or live demonstrations of each of the sessions um, from this from the series that's on the blog. I'll flip the camera over soon, do a formal introduction, um, and get you started. So through a flat nib instead of chiseled. You're okay. Yeah, that might be an issue. I do not have a chisel nib. I'll get one though for the demonstration just so that I can make the point. I'll use a highlighter. Um, and so we have through the month of March, I'm broadcasting twice a day, 2.30 p.m. Eastern and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. This is the 2.30 one. And you'll see as soon as I start the formal introduction, um, we're going to get straight into the demonstration. And I'm not going to be answering questions during the demonstration. Um, but I will open up for questions as soon as that is over. If you prefer the more live interaction um, with questions and answers as I'm writing, the 9.30 p.m. Eastern time block is a little more chatty and live. Um, the hope is that these afternoon sessions, I'll be able to take that instruction portion and move it over to YouTube for those that have been asking for that. So thank you so much for bearing with me as I tried to get used to um, a different use of Periscope. Oh, thank you. Well, I have to say it's a little bit easier this time around. When I first did it in October, it was crazy. I give much appreciation to the ladies that hung with me through the October series, which extended into November because everything went a little haywire. So getting to come through the series again now here in March has been a little bit easier for me because all I'm doing is the demonstrations. I'm not having to write the posts and all the content. It's already written. I just get to go through it again and kind of tweak things as we go. Um, so with that said, I am going to get, I <laughs> know, some days I'm like, oh, but, and then it ended up, it, it's a good thing that there's twice a day because last Friday, my littlest one got sick in the evening. So I was able to hop on and say, I'm not going to be able to, um, to scope tonight because my little one's sick, but you can catch the replay of this afternoon series session. And so that's kind of been helpful to have kind of um, a backup plan for there. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and take a breather, get started. Um, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com, looking at life creatively. And right now we are in the midst of the series 31 Days to Love Your Lettering, um, which is an introductory series to improving your handwriting and getting started with creative lettering. Today is day 12, and we're going to get started with a calligraphy marker. And um, we're going to continue doing calligraphy marker work throughout this this week. There's lots of different options, and I'll show you a few of them. And I find that the calligraphy marker is a little bit more forgiving for beginners to start rather than the dip calligraphy set. Um, just because you're not worrying about the consistency of ink and things like that. You can just concentrate on the angles because as we'll learn with calligraphy markers or the broad nib pens, it's all about the angles. So with that said, we'll get started. I'll give you a peek at the sheet we're going to work on creating today and also give you the links if you're looking for um, more information on this series. Okay. So here we have some of the different strokes we'll be doing, and you might recognize some of them as being very familiar to when we did um, just the basic handwriting forms as well. So pardon me while I put an extra light on. So we're going to get working on that. Um, if you need more information about this series, 
you can find me at creatively.com and slash love your lettering will bring you to um, all the information for finding the lettering posts, including the index of the whole series, which is clickable to find each day's lesson. Um, you can find me on facebook.com slash creatively, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. I'm at creatively on all those places. And Pinterest, you can find my boards at creatively made. Um, there is a penmanship and lettering board on there, as well as a place where I kind of curate a bunch of quotes and quips for practicing lettering. And most of my Periscope videos can be found on replay after the 24 hours um, at catch.me slash creatively. Okay, so I'm going to flip to a clean page. And I do hold my notebook in the landscape position just so that I have more room to show you um, what we're doing today. So. When we talk about calligraphy markers, there's lots of there's lots of different ones that you can you can play with that you can find at most craft stores. Um, okay, so I have the Pigma calligrapher markers, which are from Sakura. Um, these are waterproof ink, and um, the neat thing about these is that this is actually not a felt tip; it is hard plastic, so it kind of maintains its shape fairly well. The downfall to that is that since it's so rigid, it sometimes takes a little more work to get it to contact the paper very consistently. The Elegant Writer by Speedball, you can usually find these at Michael's, and this is a felt tip, um, broad, straight broad nib, which is good, and they come in a multitude of different sizes. This is 2.5 millimeter. Um, sorry, the Pigma Calligrapher comes in different sizes also. It's labeled as a 10 or 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. And those are pigment. And then this is the Zig Kurataki um, calligraphy pen marker, sorry, which is 5 millimeter and 2 millimeter. So for today, I'm going to use the 3 because that'll be a nice size for you all to be able to see. Um, oh, I also wanted to grab a highlighter. You also may find um, calligraphy pens that have a chisel tip. And while these can be used, getting the position of the pen might be a little tricky to make sure that the nib is, is catching the paper um, consistently during the strokes. So I will take one of those out. I'll look for one that's not completely worn out. Um, I've got green. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about a few different things. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the bottom of the paper and draw out some um, some of the things we'll need to keep in mind. So there's two ways to hold the, the calligraphy pen. You're either going to hold it um, with a slant or a slope to the nib, or you're going to hold it straight. And that will create different lettering styles. So I'm going to draw out a little thing <laughs> to give you an example of what I mean. So we've got a right angle here, and I'm going to put about 45 degrees there. And for straight, I'm just going to draw a dashed line across there. And what I mean by getting an angle is this is where the tip of the marker is going to go. Now keep in mind, I'm left-handed, so I will hold the pen with my right hand as well just so that you can see and make sure you're getting it right because you may be holding it slightly different. I am left-handed, but I mirror right-handed, so I don't hook my hand. I just hold it kind of as if there were a mirror <laughs> to a right-handed. Um, so when I say 45 degrees, and I'm going to zoom a little bit, see if that'll help. Okay. Do you see how the nib of the pen is not straight to the lines or the guidelines on the paper, but it's actually at an angle? And so I want the pen to actually touch there, and I'm going to pull straight down without twisting my hand. So I'm just pulling straight down in a line. And if you're using graph paper, you can certainly use that as a guide to go down. But the the tip of the pen is going to stay in the same position, and it's actually your hand that's going to move down, okay? So I'm moving my hand towards my body. If you are right-handed, same thing. Um, you're going to keep it, and mine is going to be a little shaky. This is not my dominant hand. Um, 
but you're not going to move the tip of the pen. You're just going to bring your hand towards you. Okay. So what you want to do is maintain that angle of the nib, where the nib is actually touching the paper. What you don't want to do is start here and twist the pen. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it the same. Okay. So now, at the slant, we're going to talk about some different strokes. Let me zoom back out so you can see. The first thing we're going to do is a down stroke. So again, I'm going to start, and I'm going to make these about three boxes high, just so that um, you can see, and I'm not going to cramp my hand over working it, but I'm going to start at the top and come down. So it's really just going to be a point that's touching that um, that cap line or and baseline. Okay, so you can see that the tip of the pen is not twisting. My hand is just coming down. It's pulling down. So if you whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed, you need to find the position that's comfortable for getting the tip of the pen to be in this position where it's kind of at a almost, you know, between 60 and 45 degrees as far as getting started here. Okay. So it may take a little bit of kind of switching your hand position to get something that feels comfortable. Okay. So now we're going to do the downstroke again, but this time I'm going to make a lead in, which is just a tiny bit of an upstroke. Um, so you'll notice that that one is fine because I'm working, I'm going in the same direction that um, of the angle of the pen nib. So again, when I'm coming back over, the tip of the pen is not twisting. It's my hand, and that was a little bit. My hand is doing all the movement, not my fingers. So when you maintain that 45 degree angle, 45 to 60, you're going to get that thin up and a broad down. Okay. Now the next one we'll do is a diagonal, but we're going to lead into the diagonal and then have a tail or um, or terminal or out of it. So we're going to lead in up, diagonal down, and come back out. So you'll see some of these spots that kind of are skipping. Um, that's because this is a rigid nib. It is not felt tip. The felt tip markers are going to give you a little bit more um, flexibility there, where the rigid one, you really need to concentrate on keeping it connected to the paper. Okay, we're going to do a diagonal with just that outgoing upstroke. So I'm coming down and up. It does take a little bit of practice to get your hand to stop twisting the pen. <laughs> because I think when we're writing with our regular ball points or fine points, we may be twisting a little bit. Um, now we can just go and do just a plain diagonal. So now I'm not curling the pen to meet that line. I'm just letting a little tip of that meet the baseline. Okay. 
and now the diagonal up is going to be thin. If you're using a felt tip marker, it might not be super thin because you'll have to kind of bear with whatever the thickness of that tip is on the felt tip. But basically, you're moving your hand to get that upstroke. You're not going to twist the pen. Okay. Now, I'm running out of room. <laughs> okay. The next thing we'll do is we're going to do kind of a horizontal curve. And I'll have to. Okay, so we're going to start by contacting the paper here. When we come up and curve, we're not going to twist the pen to meet the base. So again, just a little corner is going to hit it. But as you as we stroke down, we're going to get that broad that broad line. And you can do the inverse stroke of that, which starts down and curls up. Okay. Now, um, because I've held the paper landscape, I'm going to run out of room here. But the next or the final stroke that we'll practice with the nib at a slant is the vertical curves. So starting at the top and coming down um, almost in that C shape, but we're not going to do a full C. We're just working on a bit of the curve. So you'll end up starting with a really fine point, and then as you round that curve, going down, you're going to come out more on the broad side. So it's not the pen that's twisting, it's my hand that's doing the movement there. The tip of the pen still stays at about a 45 degree angle to the baseline. Okay, and then the converse of that is the vertical down where you're starting broad and coming fine. Okay. So those are our basic strokes with the pen at a slant between between 45 and 60 degrees roughly okay so we've got our downstrokes a downstroke with a lead in we've got diagonals with lead in and terminal end or exit stroke diagonal with exit more diagonals diagonal up and then we've got our curves okay so now we're going to talk about the pen being straight. And what I mean by that is now, instead of having the nib at that 45 degree angle, I'm actually going to keep it straight. So we'll have it touching that waistline or cap line and touching the baseline. So a nice, straight, broad stroke. So for me, this requires me changing the position of my hand just a little bit. So now instead of my normal pen hold, I am coming above the line just a tad bit. Okay, so let me switch the page so I can show you the same strokes with the straight pen. Okay, so again, we'll do the down stroke. And so now I'm starting by contacting that line, that cap line or X line, okay, and just again, not twisting the pen nib, but dragging my hand straight down to me, okay. Now if I had a lead in stroke, it's going to be fine and it's going to be kind of tracing on that line. 
And again, it's not my fingers that are twisting, it's my hand that's doing the movement. Now, our horizontal strokes are just going to be that fine line. So you just, whether you're hugging the base or the waistline, so you're not twisting the tip, you're just letting it glide along that line. So now a diagonal is going to be maintaining that straight position and gliding the pen over in a diagonal. <laughs> okay. So you'll notice it's not as broad as when we were holding the pen at the slant. It's a little more narrow. And again, with a lead in and an exit. Now, a diagonal up is not going to be as fine as when we had the pen at the slant. The diagonal up is going to be much more of a mirror to the diagonal down. And these are tricky because you're moving the pen away from yourself, so you might have a little bit less control. Okay, and then the next one would be our curve. Okay, so again, I'm going to reposition. You might need to stretch because this is definitely um, a little bit of a, it doesn't, it's not quite a natural feel to me. You may experience different. Okay. So doing this little curve is going to be tricky to keep that pen from twisting. You don't want it to twist. You want your hand to do the movement. Okay, and the converse. So you're gonna come down on the opposite side. And if you find your pen is lifting off the paper, slow down a little bit, like me. I'm trying to speed through the row, and my pen is lifting. Okay. All right. And now those overhand and underhand curves as well. So let's see. I've got my pen position to touch and it's going to come right back around. Kind of like a ribbon folding. You're going to have that skinny part right there as the pen crosses the apex. Okay. And underhand Curves are definitely tricky because you're going to want to twist the pen. But it's an exercise in not twisting. You're moving your hand. Okay? So now, if you don't have a straight broad nib and you have a chisel, what you're going to need to do is change your, um, your hand position to make sure that it's meeting the paper. So for me to meet the paper here, I've got to hold it a bit lower so that that whole nib is contacting. So there was straight and here's at an angle. For a lefty, your chisel tip may help you hold the pen similar to, um, to your regular pen if you're a mirror. I just tend to not buy the chisel tips because I find that the more I use the pens, I kind of work 
a natural chisel into it from from how I'm using it. So you might have a little bit more difficulty getting those fine upturns on the chisel tip, but it's not impossible. So if this is all you have right now, certainly use what you've got and start to learn the techniques. If you don't have um, a calligraphy marker at all, you can still practice this. So I'm going to show you real quick a way. Um, okay, so I've got two pencils and you might have some leftover washi tape um, from when we put our put our papers together, our pages. So I'm going to cut a piece of washi tape. Okay, I'm going to take two pencils and now ideally the pencils would be sharpened first. Okay, so now I'm going to take my washi tape and put this down here and wrap it. Now you of course will take more time and care getting that done carefully. So once I have that together then I can put another piece of washi tape a little bit further up. So now if you don't have a calligraphy pen certainly give this a try because you can still practice getting those angles and this is also a fun technique if you wanted to do calligraphy style lettering on like a poster or poster board and you don't have a nib that's big enough to do that. You know, two pencils and some washi tape. That's why the washi tape is very handy. Okay so now I've got two pencils together, which kind of looks like just a big old pencil with a space in it. However, this can help me practice the angles. So again, about 45 degree angle, so I'm going to want both tips working so that they create that 45. And I can still practice a downstroke. Now of course you'll have to go in and fill, and I've got one HB and 1B, which is two different pencil weights. <laughs> so. But again, I'm not moving the tips of the pencil, I'm moving my hand, and it's it works on the curves too. Okay, and then you would just go back in with one of the tips and close those. Okay, but it's, again, it's an inexpensive way to practice using like a broad tip pen but with two pencils instead so like I said if it's not in your budget to add a calligraphy marker to your collection right now don't stress about it tape together two pencils and you can still continue with us all right so now that I've done the demonstration I would love to answer your questions because I'm almost certain you have some so now would be a great time for questions and answers. Thank you so much for your patience during the demonstrations. It, <laughs> it's definitely an exercise and restraint for me to not respond right away. So if you have questions about the broad nib, um, I would love to help answer that for you right now. Okay. How was everyone's weekend? Okay. I may have just an awful connection. Is anybody still there? <laughs> oh, there you go. I think I have an awful connection, guys. Um, all right, and so and there was the pencil example as well. None of them leave marks on my hand. Um, no, not today. These this dries pretty quick. Although you'll see my fingers are inky um, because I changed the nib of of my parallel pen, which can be used for calligraphy also. Um, and I think I talk about this later in the week. Oh, I'm so glad that there are lefties out there that want to learn lettering because it's always been a frustration for me to try and figure it out from the righty perspective. So of course I have to teach from the lefty perspective. I know the hand positioning for righty, but that's just not my, <laughs> it's not my forte for certain. I am no right-handed expert. Um, so heavy endings because of a lot of pressure. No, actually not changing the pressure. It's the shape of the pen. That's um, a pen that's available at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's go back. Um, I think that I'm not sure if Hobby Lobby has the calligrapher. This is by Pigma. Um, the Zig calligraphy marker. Um, trying to find 
some of my pens have gone missing, which means my children have been playing with them. Uh, you probably can find the Speedball marker. So, um, Elegant Writer by Speedball. Most craft stores carry those as well. Um, and I know Target has some as well by EK Tools. So there's there are three different zig calligraphy not the double one okay yeah i like the double one because i tend to only work in black when i'm doing the calligraphy lettering um and then i do have parallel parallel pens if i wanted to add color um but yes yeah, so as long as it's a size that's workable you don't want to go too small i would say a two or 2.5 millimeter tip is probably the smallest you want to go for first learning because the more narrow that broadside is the harder it's going to be for you to see the difference between the broad downstrokes and the fine upstrokes. Hopefully that helps. So, any other questions? So I know tonight I'll get to be a little bit more chatty during this demonstration and I'll get the layout a little bit better. Um, so that I'll put these examples on the side. That way there's more room for the strokes underneath. So it's kind of like when we did the basic strokes, except now we're just changing up the pen a little bit. So every time we change up the style of pen, I'll go ahead and do stroke sheets just so that you can see what the differences are from, from the basics. You're so welcome. All right, so my little one is much better, though someone that was asking my answer for the endings. Oh, it does not, it's not the change in the pressure, it's the change in the angle. So here's a, here's a five millimeter one. So, um, this is a calligraphy pen. This is, I think you're thinking of the brush lettering because that's about the pressure. This is about kind of letting, um, the broad tip of the pen because of the angle that you're starting at. When you finish that stroke, you're on the broad side. When you're starting it, you're on the narrow side. So, so I've not changed my pressure, and I've not twisted my hand. I've, I've not twisted my fingers. I've carried my hand down and let that, the tip of the nib or the broad edge of it, stay in the same spot. So here's the downstrokes with the more narrow one. The diagonals. So again, this one is felt tip, so those upstrokes are not quite as narrow as the plastic one nibs are. But, so hopefully that helps. But yes, you're not changing the pressure. You're just um, you're letting that broad side hit the line in a different position. So you're either going to be holding this pen at about a 60 to 45 degree angle or straight, depending on the style of lettering you're going after. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow when we go into print with a calligraphy pen. So I'll give you one more minute if there are any other questions. If you're typing, just tap the screen so I know to wait another minute or so. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so I'll give you two more minutes before heading off. I know the calligraphy pen is definitely a little tricky, but it kind of opens up new windows for you for your creative lettering, so it's fun to get started with it, especially because some of the calligraphy markers can be found fairly inexpensively, usually for under $3 at local stores. So definitely EK Tools at Target, I think. Um, let me see. I'm going to see if I have it in the post. Yeah, and like I said, if you can't get a calligraphy pen this week and you still want to follow along live, go ahead and tape two pencils together. You can even just use number two pencils or mechanical pencils. You're just going to want to tape them so that their tips are hitting the paper at the same time. So you'll just stick some washi tape on it and then you can still get the practice for finding the angle. So you know, you'll either hold it at the 45 or you'll hold it straight okay so you can definitely do it so, and it helps to have two of the same pencils <laughs> but I just grabbed which was handy 
Okay. So there you have it. With that, I'll just flip back to the screen if anybody needed. Um, okay. If you want more information about this series, creatively.com slash love your lettering. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow or tonight for the 9.30 more chatty scope. A little bit live, more live interaction with the calligraphy pen. It's been great to talk to you again. Hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.